Welcome to the Toka Backstage Podcast. Join Toka's Executive Director, Chris Wolf, in conversations with the artists and people behind the scenes of the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation's performances and events. Backstage, it's my honor to have uh, Maestro Carlo Ponti from the Los Angeles Virtuosi. Um, they have a, it's a special organization that has a special live stream coming up on October 3rd, and it was, I felt it was my duty to let everyone uh, for Toka know about it. Uh, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time, sir. Thank you. Uh, glad to be here. Um, so, if you could, I mean, you have a, for those that don't know you, you have an, an uh, a very impressive resume, everything from the Russian National Orchestra to the San Bernardino Symphony, and just, I mean, all over the world. Can you tell me a little bit how you got started in in becoming uh, sort of the uh, musical mastermind that you are today? I started uh, my family, uh, both my parents are not musicians, but they were very much involved in classical music in supporting classical music uh, all their life and i grew up listening to recordings of the great conductors of the great instrumentalists so it was always in my life and from very very early on i i felt that i had a, a vocation and needs to pursue uh, that field and i started playing piano around the age of eight which is actually relatively late uh, believe it or not but uh, and then, and then my father, who was a film producer, um, always admonished me to follow uh, to follow my musical inclinations. And 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 he, you know, he wasn't really he appreciated music, but he wasn't really very musical gift musically gifted as far as being able to play an instrument or to do it professionally, but but he always admonished me, ah, oh, you shouldn't, you know, you should try to be a conductor because it's the most beautiful occupation. And so, and so um, I fought his advice finally, and at the age of 18, I went to the, um, to a summer uh, festival, a summer conducting festival called, uh, called the Conductors Institute, which was in Hartford, Connecticut, and which was uh, headed by a very, very famous uh, conductor and conducting teacher called Harold Farberman. Uh, and 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 from then on, uh, I really my 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 first impact was very positive, and I really enjoyed doing it. So from then on, I I chose this uh, I chose this uh, this path. Well, and and, and again, a very impressive resume. Um, but I'm 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 curious. You, you I mean, most people in your position. Um, don't typically take their time out and, and start concentrating on an organization specifically for young people and young, uh, young musicians. Can you tell us a little bit about the Los Angeles First Rossi and, and how that got started? Well, throughout, throughout my life, I always felt the need to help young talents, to help education, because I think that an artist uh, one of the one of the main one of the main purposes of an artist one of the main uh, needs that an artist can fulfill is to give back to the community to to impart uh, music education to educate and to be in a sense a mentor and a teacher as well so so all throughout my career i always made time to whenever i conducted or whenever i uh i uh, traveled to a a different country to, to give a concert. I always took time out to go visit schools, to go, if I could, uh, schedule permitting work with, uh, with, uh, with the youth orchestras or the youth ensembles in the schools. So I felt the, the need to create an ensemble to support and to advocate the study of music using, basically using the orchestra as an educational resource. So the Los Angeles Virtuosi um, is the first orchestra of its kind in that it uses the net profits from its concerts to support music education in schools and in the community. So currently we're partnering, we're partnering with a number of organizations and, uh, of, and, uh, and schools, mostly public schools uh, in the LA area. And we allocate, as I said, all the net profits towards the development of, 
of the uh, uh, music education programs in these organizations and these schools. So there's two ways that we that we basically support music education, that the orchestra supports music education. The first one is to um, allocate funds from the concerts to, to, to build programs that are already in the schools. For example, we are sponsoring currently a Valin uh, instruction program at the Pacoima Elementary School in Pacoima. And uh, we were able to grow this program from, from nothing basically to now having over a hundred uh, um, uh, students participating in it. And one of our musicians is teaching uh, the Valin classes. Uh, hence the students benefit from having instruction from one of the best um, uh, artists in Los Angeles, as opposed to uh, usually when public schools uh, use a music teacher, they're most often, uh, for example, if, if a, a public school uh, uh, teaches violin classes, more often than not, the teacher is not a violinist per se. He, he's also a violinist, but also plays other instruments. In our case, they get the advantage of having a dedicated teacher, one of, one of the best uh, players in Los Angeles, teaching that specific instrument uh, with that specific credential. So that's one way. And the other way is that we integrate uh, with, our, with our orchestra, which is made of the best players in Los Angeles. Uh, we integrate young soloists with professional uh, players. So that's uh, the second way in which we do it. And that's an example of what we're doing on October 3rd. We're featuring two talented young soloists that the 2019 Orange County uh, School of Music and Dance Rising Stars Piano Competition, which is one of the, one of the organizations that we partner with. Uh, this year, and they will be both featured with the with the professional uh, uh, players of our orchestra. That's that's amazing, and 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 so needed right now. I mean, I I think that's one thing you and I share is our our uh, desire to sort of help young talent. Um, that's part of what uh, the Torrance Culture Arts Foundation does. Is we you know help nurture young talent and try and get them exposed to being in a professional atmosphere, which is amazing i mean you sort of take it one step further and have them play with with these professionals um so the live stream is on october 3rd how um how are you doing that uh with all social distancing is it i imagine that sort of throws a, a sort of a curveball in in the works for especially for a, a classical orchestra well obviously there's we we are going through very challenging times and the performing arts have been of course impacted as all the other fields uh and um we uh are doing the live stream in a rather conventional way as far as live stream goes um and as far as the setup uh, of the musicians goes uh, we are uh, going to perform two orchestral pieces uh the first movement of Mozart, uh, Piano Concerto Number Twelve, and the uh, the uh, the entire uh, Beethoven Second Piano Concerto, and we will do it with a reduced ensemble. Uh, of course, we will be wearing masks at the performance. Uh, the soloists, myself, uh, myself, and the strings, uh, that is, um, and the brass will be um, because they cannot wear masks because. Of, of their instruments, of them having to play their instruments, they they will be uh, they will have plexiglass shields uh, uh, put around them, and of course there there's a so, there are there are there are local social distancing man, uh, mandates with which the uh, union has has basically uh, suggested. Uh, so uh, the strings will be will be using only one player per string part, so not a string section, so just a string quintet and they will be a distance uh, six feet apart. And the uh, wind and brass players will be distance 12 feet apart in a semicircle around the strings because they cannot wear masks. So of course, a, a reduced ensemble because of the necessities, but uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's something that I was surprised by, by the, by at rehearsals, but by, by the richness of the sound, even though we are, we're we're playing with a reduced ensemble, and and uh, I, I think it will be a great performance because the the novel layout of the of the orchestra will allow the pieces to shine all the more in a different uh, oral light in a way. 
And, and I'm curious, um, I mean, I having done a number of stage shows, I can't imagine what you're going through right now, just trying with all the, uh, trying to coordinate all that. Um, but I'm curious, do you, do you, th do you think that, um, well, actually, I, as far as viewership, um, for people who want to get tickets, how, what's the best way for them to check out, to get a ticket for the event? They can go on uh, either the uh, LA Virtuosi site or the theaters site will be where, where we uh, have done most of our concerts and from where we will be live streaming. Um, the um, website of, of our orchestra where they can go on is uh, www.lavirtuosi.org. Uh, and the theater's website is um, uh, theatreremontcabaz.com. Uh, so um, I don't know how we can put those things on the screen. But I, 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 we will, we will. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but maybe we can, uh, we can manage that so, so our viewers can uh, get both, uh, both websites and they, can, and they can check them out. That's a beautiful space. I've been there a couple of times and it's a, uh, it's a, it's a lovely theater. Mm -hmm. um, so as somebody who has all these great accomplishments, when you talk to young students, um, young people who want to pursue a sort of a career in music, what, what advice do you typically give them? Well, first of all, I think, I think that in order to pursue a, a musical career in, in any field, where classical music or, or, or any other genre of music or, uh, or, or in any artistic field, I think that it's, it's, it's important to, from very early on, to have that desire and that passion for the field at hand. Uh, so that's something that, unfortunately, I think that one has to be born with. And, and, and so uh, <clears throat> uh, presupposing that 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 the young person has that desire uh in a sense i would admonish dedication and and perseverance but those are things that that will come automatically if the person has the inherent desire and inherent passion for pursuing that field and do you think that I've I've always been curious about from from a perspective of of a conductor the uh, sort of the um, history or not the history but the whether or not classical music will survive because it it seems to me as somebody who's I mean my introduction to classical music was watching my father uh, sitting on the on the sofa as a child, you know, listening to music, listening to his records and, you know, waving his hands around. And then of course I go to the bowl, I take my kids to the bowl, but do you, th is there a concern now that people's, that it's, people sort of drift away from classical? Is there a way to sort of bring them back into the fold so they can appreciate sort of the, the majestic sounds of classical music? Are you talking in general or because of COVID? Uh, just in general, I think I think in general, I think classical music has been on the map for a long time, and I don't think it is. It is since it's you know it's a, it's a, it's it's a form of it's the most elitistic in a way form of music because the the listener has to have some kind of background information, so it presupposes that that the, that the audience for the genre has to be educated so it's more it's it, 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 it will always fall into a more elitistic or a more specialized if you will not use the word elitistic but a more specialized kind of kind of kind of audience based uh, base and and so so if you put that in consideration i think that classical music has been has been really uh in a sense uh, very well established in the last uh in recent years, especially here with, uh, you know, with all the wonderful things, things that the uh, LA Philharmonic has done or with, uh, with Gustavo Dudamel, really, really, really bringing it, bringing it to, uh, uh, 
to younger audiences with uh, Gustavo going into schools, being a very big uh, proponent for music education, really connecting with young, younger audiences. And, and, so, and so I think that classical music has very, very effectively uh, reinvented uh, itself to align with, with, current, with current times and to fit in in a way with the uh, with the current uh, with the current trends. And do you, um, I, I guess I ask that because I know that like for you know there's for a presenter or an organization who wants to present classical music, it's always difficult because obviously to bring in an orchestra, it's it's tons of money to try and produce something. And I know that Torrance had a a uh, an orchestra or symphony and they lost it just because obviously they couldn't they couldn't maintain the the amount of money it took to maintain that that uh, or pay the bills so i I'm, i've always been sort of a concern that classical music may sort of take a dip but i i think you're right i think with with gustavo and obviously with your efforts uh, hopefully it will come to light i do i do think though that one thing that would help sort of Bring it back to bring it to the main to to the mainstream audience is if they actually had an, a sign on stage that said applause, so that people knew not to applaud during between movement breaks and so because I, I remember when as a child that was my big thing was I was never sure when to applaud. Right, um, right, right. Uh, right. Yeah. So what what's the what is your hope as the the founder of the uh, virtuosi? Uh, for the future of the organization, what do you what do you hope to accomplish? Well, our our uh, our goals is to expand our educational programs, to partner with more schools, to be able to uh, perform uh, in uh, in ever larger venues. Currently, we perform in auditoriums that are not more than five hundred seats, uh, but of course, to be able to perform in larger venues, to be able to uh, uh, bring in more. Uh, funds, who, uh, which we would later uh, allocate to our partner schools, and to uh, expand the bandwidth of our audience, which in a way, uh, the current situation has been a silver lining because for an organization uh, like ours to not to be constrained with physical considerations of an audience having to reunite in a certain place at a certain time, but uh, being able to go across across borders internationally with uh, live streams has been a blessing in a way because it's uh, it's allowing us to spread the the message of the important of the importance of education of the importance of the study of music to show people what can be accomplished when uh, young people dedicate themselves to music uh, it's been able to for us to spread that message internationally and to really uh, spread a message of inspiration, strength, and, and uh, unity across, across platforms, across borders, uh, all the more significant in these uh, difficult times. Well, that's awesome. Um, well, sir, I, I know you're busy. You've got, you're still in, in preparation for your, for your con concert this weekend. I, I thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you so much. For all the, hard, the great work you're doing. And maybe one of these days we can get you your orchestra uh, into Torrance because we have well, actually on a footnote. Sorry to interrupt you. On a footnote, we started our 2019-2020 uh, season, so last season, with a performance at the West High School in oh. Torrance, um, and uh, we worked with the West High School uh, chorus. We, we played the Vivaldi uh, Gloria, Antonio Vivaldi's Gloria. And we had a wonderful collaboration. All the school was really backed us up in the project. Uh, Maestro Anton Rodek, the, the conductor of the choir, was phenomenal. Uh, the principal of the school, uh, um, Kara Heinrich, was amazing. And also the teachers there, uh, Orain Barus, uh, Stephanie Alfwood. So, so it, was, it was just a great experience. So we have performed uh, in uh, Torrance as of late. Awesome. Sounds amazing. I wish I'd been there. Well, we will get you back to Torrance one of these days. Looking Thank you so to. much and uh, good luck with the concert. And I urge people, if you haven't yet, get your tickets. Uh, it's October 3rd. We'll provide the link below. 
And um, thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure.